Good morning everybody this is just another taxpayer driving off to work this Monday morning hey listen I'm gonna do a short rant here about helping people and if you agree or are starting to feel the way I'm feeling about helping people leave me a thumbs up or a comment or both but I'm starting to get very disillusioned with helping people now I'm not talking about the help where you see somebody with a flat tire and you go and help them change their flat tire or you know or help them help somebody you know with their grocery bags. I'm not talking about that kind of help. I'm talking about financial help. I am so disillusioned and I think being helped in that capacity, that capacity um, financially, the financial type of help is very addictive and is detrimental to our society. Just look around you. Like I said, this is going to be a rant, but I'm also going to throw in a couple of real life experiences I've had to back up what I feel is just not good. There used to be a time when people took pride and were embarrassed to, to take money. Um, those were the times of our parents when they were, you know, young adults. No more. Now it's take what you can get and go ask somebody else for additional help. My wife and I went to uh, Yosemite National Park about five years ago, maybe six years ago. And as we were walking around, we saw small signs that said, please do not feed the animals. They will forget to uh, feed for themselves. Something like that. I'm over, I'm, I'm generalizing, but that's what the sign said. Please do not feed the animals um, because they will forget how to forage or feed for themselves. I, I forget. And I got to thinking, we're nothing but animals with a thumb and a, and a better brain. That's all. You know, we walk on twos, but we're animals. And I, I just feel that people are finding it easier and easier to ask for assistance. I mean, to ask for assistance. A short story. I have um, I have somebody in our uh, in our circles that we know um, addicted to heroin. That person is trying to get themselves clean. Um, that person used to, out here in Tucson, we have these Sonic Burgers, burger joints. They used to roll out to your car and on motorcycles, that's, I mean, not motorcycles, um, roller skates type of thing, and take your order and roller skate back in, bring your order back out. Uh, some of you guys might know them as Rally Burgers, R-A-L-L-Y, depending on your uh, location in the United States, but out here in Tucson, they're called Sonic Burgers. He used to manage one to make um, about $50,000 a year. He doesn't feel like doing it no more. He's a young man, late 20s, young man, healthy, not overweight, big, strong man. Doesn't want to do it no more, it's embarrassing. But now he's on, let's see, food stamps, um, welfare, uh, he's on a social security, and I'll get to that, they learn the legal lingo to get on social security, he's on access, which is a type of a supplemental medical program here in Arizona, and I'm just amazed, he is too embarrassed to work for, at a burger joint, but not embarrassed to swipe an EBD card, EBT card. Just blows my mind. I just think being helped is very addictive. They get, um, people get used to be 
being helped and they get, they grow to be lazy. And then when you offer them a job, and I've, I've seen this, I've, I've, I've heard it firsthand. This is not somebody told me that somebody told me. I mean, I've seen this firsthand with multiple dudes of people. You, you offer them a job and they'll, they'll actually do the math in their brain. Hmm, I work 40 hours and I'll bring home I don't know, $400, $450, shit. I could stay on my welfare and access, and yeah, I, I don't have to do nothing. I bring in $480, eh, $480, yeah, I'm only making $20 more to go back to work. Now I'm going to stay on my welfare and, and food stamps and, and all that. No, thank you, though, no, thank you. I've seen that. It just becomes very addictive. Um, and I'm not talking about the people who are truly disabled. Don't, don't leave me those stupid comments. Oh, everybody, you know, there's a bunch of people out here who need to really seriously need it. I'm talking about those folks that we all know who do not need help. When I was a kid, back in the uh, early 80s, I was waiting tables, a busboy at a Furs cafeteria. I worked in a lot of places, Denny's when I was a kid. I did anything it took at the age of 19. 1819 Denny's, uh, but, but, but the one store I can remember is Furs Cafeteria. You go in there and you eat all you can want, all you want for one price. And I used to bust the tables every now and then, somebody leave me a buck. And at the time, I had my own apartment, and a lot of times I couldn't afford to pay rent. I would get kicked out, I'd have to go and find another apartment that was cheaper, or I'd have to beg people to, to, to be roommates with. God knows how many times, man, my electricity was turned off because I couldn't afford to do it, but I kept fighting. I kept fighting to be better. And back in those days, they didn't have financial assistance for minimum wage workers. Going off on another story, I go to Walmart here to go shopping. And my wife and I just asked the cashier when we got up there. It was a slow, so it was slow, so there wasn't a lot of people around. Hey man, we're just curious, how many people use EBT cards? Because we noticed the person in front of us kind of looked, you know, that kind. Um, and he said 50%. And then he got a little, like he was trying to teach me a lesson. Uh, you know, you shouldn't really be asking this sort of thing because I'm on it also. He goes, I'm on, uh, I'm on a certain percentage of welfare and I get EBT cards because I only make minimum wage. I didn't get that when I was a kid. I didn't get to mooch off the taxpayers to supplement my drug habit or beer habit or whatever freaking habits these people have. Why better yourself if you're going to get everything you need? At your first job, why improve yourself? You're, you're going to make minimum wage. You're going to get financial assistance for the government, EBT cards. There's no reason to go get an education and better society if you're getting everything you need. The, the goal is to to give them just enough so they fight to grow better, to improve society. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but. Uh, but a beginning job flipping burgers or that type of job is not meant to sustain a family. But back to being helped. I just think being helping people in a financial mm -hmm. capacity is very addictive. And they grow to uh, get used to it and, and rely on it. And they grow lazy, complicit. They have that financial backing, knowing that they can't afford nothing or claiming that they can't afford anything, and then they go have kids. And they go to the government saying they need more money because their financial burden is even greater. Those kids grow up to see their parents on welfare. What do they do? They do the same damn thing. You're thinking, what the hell do I know? You know, I have it good. 
let me tell you, I have it good now because I fought. I fought for everything I have. I used to have a Galaxy, what was it, a 64 Galaxy XL500 that smoked. It literally went through four quarts of, uh, of oil in about two days. I fought for the Jaguar I'm driving now. I fought for the uh, Ford 150 and the house that we have here and in Pine Top. I did it with an education and I didn't freaking mooch off the taxpayers. I needed help, like I said, roomating with people and that sort of thing, and from time to time, and, and, and granted, my society uh, when I was young was different. My parents instilled in us, you need to work. And not, not, they didn't teach us how to go down to the social security office. Or go, oh, hey, uh, you can't afford that? Uh, let me teach you how to go apply for an EBT card. That's not the society, uh, the mentality I grew up in. Not like these young kids nowadays. Back to Social Security. So that heroin person that I was telling you about, they learned the legal lingo to get on Social Security. How can one get on Social Security being that young in their late 20s? Yeah, they learned legal, excuse me, legal lingo, the language. They got PTSD, that's what they say. I got post-traumatic syndrome. That's the new word to get automatically get you on that you can't really medically prove is a lie. And then they say we were, he goes and says, well, you know, I just was uh, had a bad childhood. And blah, 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 blah. And, and, and he's getting like freaking, uh, what was it? 90% uh, social security now. Just got it, 90% social security. My wife had two surgeries, one in each hand, two surgeries, one in each ankle because she has a degenerative um, cartilage problem. Can't work. We went through three years trying to get Social Security, had our, um, had our court date because they turned it down so you get a court date. Went to the court, uh, they asked my wife along with the lawyer all kinds of questions, they provided medical records, the judge looks at my wife and says, okay, we need a, uh, we need a few weeks to make the decision. Uh, five weeks go by, my wife gets a letter saying she was declined. They feel that she can work sitting somewhere. And yet this little punk can get on Social Security just by claiming PTSD. So this little punk, you know, I'm not gonna call him punk. He's actually not a bad dude. He just got some mental shit going on. He gets a girlfriend. Well, normally you run in circles of your lifestyle. So she's into heroin and, and meth and shit. And he brings her over our house, which we kind of resolved that that don't happen no more. But while she was in our house, she was saying she's gonna apply for her social security and uh, and she's uh she's gotta be uh, 21, if she's lucky, 21. And we look, my wife and I looked at her, why? Well, I got PTSD. It's just amazing, um, and I know I'm ranting, um, and 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 my upbringing was my up was Bronx, New York. I was born on Brooklyn Nostrand Avenue. Bad place. So I've seen it. I've I've been in that. I'm not I'm not on a mountain talking down at people. I then moved to 1616 Walton Avenue, Bronx, where I grew up. In my younger days, I was in Tarpon Springs, Florida, what they call the Four Corners, where all the drug dealers would come out and sell their dope. It was a nasty, bad area, and I would have to walk to work back in those days, and I would have to walk past a DHS office, and back in those days, they didn't mail you a check or direct deposit your welfare checks. So once every Wednesday, once every Wednesday, would, they would drive to this DES, DHS or DES, whatever the hell they call it. And on my way to work, I'd have to walk by it. And once every Wednesday, once a month, all these Cadillacs and these all these people with gold chains would be walking in the DHS office. Because back in those days, you had a, I guess, interview for your 
provide records that you were showing that you were looking for jobs and everything before they were handing out free money. And I'd have to walk by these all these people walking in the HS office, just loaded with driving with freaking Cadillac ship, and I was walking and working. These people are freeloading off society. You know, in the comments section below, let me know if you know you know of these type of people also, you know. I'm not denying the people who truly need help. And as a society, we should take care of those people. But I think now the moochers are outweighing the people who really need help. And now the people who really need help, like my wife, cannot get it because the financial burden on the state is too great. And they're not doing their due diligence to verify that the people who are receiving help deserve the help. My wife is 52 years old. She's, she's been working since she was 16, paying taxes since she was 16. And those were Social Security taxes also. And she was just turned down because this, we know the state burden financial burden they can't handle it they can't deal with it no more um well that's my rant i know i'm going to get a lot of thumbs down but uh let me know what you think i'm not perfect i don't know it all i can i do know what i see and i tell you what i don't like helping people anymore financially Oh, another story about that heroin dude. So he got, bear me, this is good, because now the tables are turned against the taxpayers. So this guy had, uh, had was married, got a divorce with two kids, and he's now paying Social Security. Uh, not Social Security, uh, uh, I don't know, alimony and child support. That's what he's paying. But let me, in, in a proxy way, we are paying his alimony and child support. You and I being taxpayers, we're paying it, not him, because he's receiving that money via other resources, via food stamps, EBT cards, um, medical. So in a proxy way, we're paying for that. We're paying for his alimony and his child support, and how many other millions of people are we paying for? Proxy, They're, we're paying for their legal ventures of divorce or, or God knows how many other things. We the taxpayers are forced with a gun to pay charity. When back in my mom's day, she used to tell me they had to go to a church and ask for charity. Now what they do is they make laws saying we will be charitable. Even at the financial detriment of you and I. They keep taking out of our tax, our paycheck. Regardless of whether we can afford our current financial obligations, the taxes keep going up. Well, take care folks. Have a great day. Again, leave me a comment. Leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe. I would love that. Um, have a good day.